Danny Flexen for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by Derry Matthews, former British champion, Commonwealth champion, WBA interim champion, WBU champion. I've probably missed a few out, but you have won a lot of titles. You missed a few out. I won 10 in total, Dan. 10 as a professional. Um, and a senior ABA title as well, which is important to me as well. I only mentioned the ones I was there for at ringside, so <laughs> that's my yeah, excuse. I'll let you off then. Um, how are you doing? How's life in, I don't want to say retirement, because you're still very busy training fighters, obviously. Yeah, that's where I am now. I'm just I'm, I, I'm in isolation, um, which as in the final on Wednesday. So I just arrived at Wakefield today. We've just had our COVID test before. And I've just got to sit in the room now and wait for the results, and we'll go from there. And then tomorrow we've got the weigh-in, and then Wednesday's the, the big fight. Obviously, it's a standard question. You're not going to say any different, but I still have to ask it. How's he been looking in camp? He's, he's done everything what's been asked of him. Um, obviously, you know, it, it's, it, it's been like coming off. The fight was about to st uh, happen and it weren't about to happen. Then, you know, we had loads of different dates put in the back of our minds. And, but we've had to just kn knuckle down and, and work out things. And everything what, what's been asked of him in camp, he's done. Georgie Vaughan is as the head coach, I'm, I'm the number two to George, but, you know, it's just, you know, he's done everything right, I'm just good that George isn't allowed to do the corner, obviously, because the age restriction of the British Boxing Board of Control, so, it's left over to me, but, I'll be under the instructions of what George has been telling us through the, through the old camp. It's got to be quite an advantage for Jazza, though, that when his head coach can't be in the corner for, you know, the COVID restrictions, the number two is you because you're a head trainer in your own right. You're a hugely experienced former pro and amateur. Yeah, well, I listen. I I, I pad jazz every day anyway, and I, I'm I'm with George every day. And you know what 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 George always installed in in, in me. You know, I've learned off George. So it's like I'm just I'm just a mirror image of George. Everyone says I'm the same. I'm the same person. I'm the same strictness as him. We speak the same. You know. And I just, I've learned off him and everything I'll be telling Jazz will only be what I've been told off George over the years and what I've learned off George that they, you know, picking up things in the gym and we've got a game plan. Um, and let's be real, Jazz doesn't need anyone in the corner. You know, he's, he's a fighting man and all he needs is someone to give him a drink and, and tell him what, you know, a little few tips. But apart from that, he's, he's his old man. No one can tell an excellent fighter like himself what to do in each round. I'm sure you can identify with Jazza a fair bit. He's done things the hard way, just like you did. But so's Ryan Walsh. You you must have a fair bit of um, insight into him as well. Yeah, listen, they're both tremendous fighters. And I think Ryan Walsh doesn't get the credit he deserves. Fa five years British champion. No one will go near him to fight. No one will fight him. No one will go near him. You know, to be a British champion for that many years and then be stripped of it is, is stupid. I think they should be fighting for the British title and I also think they should be fighting for a, a world eliminator. You know, the winner of this fight is, is capable to fight for the world title. They've only both Jazz only lost to world class operation. You know, world class fights have only beat Jazza. Ryan Walsh is a tremendous, tremendous fighter and you know, we're all looking forward to it and the respect the book off each other's goes to show what kind of fighters they are. And we could talk about this fight for ages, but there's another MTK Golden Contract final taking place on the same show, of course. And I think you might have a little bit of insight into that as well, having trained alongside Tyrone McKenna and having been in the ring with O'Hara Davis. What what do you make of that matchup? Listen, listen it's gonna be a it's gonna be a it's gonna be a mad a mad fight. It depends how disciplined Tyrone can stay. Um uh, Tyrone's got a very, very good box somebody. I know he likes a bit of a fight, but he only likes a fight when there's a bit of a crowd there and I eggs him on. So I'm hoping he can just use his boxing brain tied on and just get a comfortable get a comfortable lead of six or seven rounds and then just dance away for the next couple of rounds and, and win the fight. But at the same time, he can't afford to have a slugfest with a while of Davies because I know myself that he's, he's a massive puncher and he can, he can really hit hard. Do you see a bit of yourself in Tyrone? Because you were an excellent technical boxer. You you had all the fundamentals nailed down, but you, as your career went on, got into a lot of fights, a lot of scraps. Yeah, I just wanted to I wanted to please the crowd, and I think that's how I got 
I think that's how I got a bit of a, a, a massive, massive fan base. And I, lo- I love to fight. I love to please the crowd. You know, people spending the well um cash on you coming to watch your fight. So, you know, you, you've got to get them value for money. And I, I, I love a fight. And I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't love a fight. I wish I could just stick to the boxing things. And George used to go mad at me and Danny used to go mad at me. But, you know, it's part of boxing. Do you think the no crowd environment might have suited you? Not so much in building a fan base, obviously, but in getting more wins in the in the column. Um, no, I don't. No, I, I, I'm not feeling it, me. I like I, I love I love the fan base, and I'm a boxing fan as well. More than anything, I, I, I love to be. A, I love to go to even amateur boxing shows and professional boxing shows. I'm at a show when well, the amateur boxing season was 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 up and running. I was at a show nearly every single night watching watching talent. So I love being around around the sport and I, I love being a part of the crowd. And it's it's a, it's a it's a hard one to, you know to to happen. It's hard one to have a fight without the crowd. I think. But for Jazz, Jazz is made up. Jazz Jazz is delighted. Jazz is like this is just a normal fight. This is a street fight for me, but a smart one. Do you regret, we were talking about uh, McKenna and Davis, do you regret not facing O'Hara earlier in your career? Uh, yeah and no, but at the same time, he went round earlier in my career. Or, and let, let's be honest, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have lived with me. That's, that's speaking my mind. He would, I don't think, me and me either, but I don't think many of them would. Uh, I think that's why I was very. I thought I was always avoided. Like I've just been speaking to Kevin Mitchell downstairs, and we never got to. We never got to box me and Kev. I wonder why? Because Frank, you know, people kept us away from each other, and I never got to box John Murray because people kept us away from each other. So, you know, my era, my era's gone now. Uh, like for me, John Murray, Kevin Mitchell, uh, Carl Johansson. I never got to fight Carl either, but they were all. Top top fighters, top top hard cases, and you know, and, and I, I mean, don't be wrong, I did box, I box some of the best fighters out there. I believe in Gavin Meese. I, 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 had, I had them all Gavin Meese, Marcelli, Coyle, Crawler, Foster, you name them. I've, I've boxed them, but there's a few got away. Ricky Bain, I said Ricky Bain's got away and, and stuff, so you know, but I'd, I'd, have, I'd have loved to, and I, I'm not going to give no disrespect. To the, the, the people who are around now, but I don't think any of them now would be able to live with any of us. Not just myself, I mean, like Sir Mitchell, who's a top class fighter, Carl Johansson. It, it, for me, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, John Murray, again, a great, great fighter. So they're all fighters who, who people got away from. What's it like still working with fighters every day? Does it kind of fulfill that? buzz that you got from boxing before or does it make you want to come back I know you don't you're not going to come back now but is there an inkling no 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 I know what I enjoy it more I've just been again I'm going to speak about Kev me and Kev I've just I've just said to him I love this side and he went it's the best side in the world he said people say always I get asked the question every day do you miss boxing I went no not really (laughs) why would I miss getting punched in the face why you know it's okay getting up with the runners and taking them on the running track and doing what uh, on the hills and stuff, but you're not running when you've got to run them days and you you cutting your calories and everything. It's hard work, um, so I love the coaching side of it. And my main aim is to have have a kid from the age of eight to nine and guide them right through, you know, to 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 great honours. Not just not just to be a champion, just to be a better person in life. That, that's that's my main goal is. You know, if I can get kids off the streets of Liverpool, guide them in the right way, you know, put them in, you know, education and everything, I, I'm doing something right. How's your own family getting on? One of your um, kids is, is boxing now, isn't he? Yeah, I've got a son. I've got a son, a nephew and a niece. And the three of them, my niece is a part of the England team. Um, I've got my nephew as well, who's, who's very good. And I've got my son, who's had one bout. But I'd rather him not box, if I'm honest. Um, he's nearly 16, he's coming up to 16 now, but he's, he's, he's very, very, very talented, very talented. And a lot of people haven't seen him yet because he hasn't had that, well, he's only had one bout. But I can't get him a bout anywhere. Um, and he's, a, he's a, again, he's a massive puncher, very, very, very big puncher. So 
he might be wanting to turn over in a few years. Why would you rather he didn't box? I don't know. I think that, that one, he's got the same name as me. Um, so has he got a lot of, has he got big boots to fill? I'd say so. Um, but at the same time, if he if he does want to box, he's going to get my, you know, he's going to get my, my arm around his shoulders. He's going to get put in the right way, put in the right path. Um, I know where, where I want him to be. I know who, who I want him to manage him. I know who I want to guide him. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, think, you never know. Two years time, he might, he might decide. No, what I don't want to. I mean, he's still gonna. He's still fighting now. But in two years time, he might say, "I want to go." I'm on the mix with the big boys and have a go with the program because, and I'm a big believer that too many amateur fights doesn't make you a good pro fighter. I, I just you've seen it last night with Oliver Joyce mm. and on Saturday. Night. Sorry, sorry, um, Oliver jo- Joyce. He, he's like top top amateur. But you stayed around a bit too long, and you, you're talking to him at Frampton. Frampton was talking in the studio where, you know, them two were very, very top, top amateurs. Had so many bouts together. Cal went one way. He stayed on to be an amateur, and look who's come out on top. Yeah. Cal Frampton. And is that because just too many miles on the clock, or is it more adapting to the pro style earlier? I think. No, I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, I want to say the miles on the clock because don't be wrong, some of these top amateurs are very, very, very good. And you go to tournaments, you find five or six times, and they're, they're hard fights. And you know, to have a long career in this, in a long career in boxing, you know, you can't take too many shots. You've got to, and it's not who you box, it's who you avoid. And you know, and again, the more you, the quicker you do turn over, the more you can learn. You've got longer to learn. In your career, like someone said the other night, oh, you can come again about Joyce, but realistically, can he? Can he come again? He's he's, he's getting on now, so you know. It's just, my 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 thing is turn a professional as soon as you can. And just tell us before we let you go about some of the other lads you've got in the gym at the moment. I know Jazz is going to get most of the headlines, but who else are you working with that we should look out for? Well, Jay Farrell. Um, Big massive cruiserweight who can punch like any. I've never felt anything like him on the pads. Um, massive, massive puncher. Mishak Spears, another one who, yeah, yeah Mishak who Tony Bellew manages. Very, very good fighter. Just hasn't had the opportunities he deserves. Um, but very, very talented. He's a, he's another one who you know got high hopes for a game with Jay Fallow. Jay Fallow just needs a bit of luck. Steve Woods is doing a great job with him. He just needs the opportunity you now to maybe get out before Christmas and then we can plan a big title fight for Jay. And we just turn in the middle of turning someone over now, Josh Wright, um, top hammer, just that, come from a sorry, um, where I box from. He's very, very, very talented, very, very heavy handed for lightweight. Um, so we're just in the middle of time to get him. So we'll, in the middle of getting him signed up now for, for hopefully with MTK. MTK going to sign him up and put him on a few big shows. Good stuff. Heavy-handed, lightweight from the Solly rings a few bells, doesn't it? Well, I suppose when you yeah. turned over, you weren't a lightweight, were you? No, I was only a bantamweight yeah. when I turned over. So, but I was one of them. I was a heavy punching one, so I, mm. I think I carried the weight through. Yeah, indeed. All right, well, really appreciate it. I hope um, isolation goes quickly for you. And, no worries, uh, mate. Best of luck for Wednesday night. Cheers, top man, Dan. Mm.